what is happening in YouTube. I hope you guys are well. Today I want to chat through the 2024 season, what my race plans are for my second pro season, how I approach it mentally, physically, what I learned from this year that didn't work and apply to next year to get better. I noticed mentally that a lot of changes between age group race planning and pro season planning. One in the beginning is for example even financially. For the age group ranks you have to commit by now for Ironman Racing about a year ahead to sign up for a race and then you kind of commit for that and go for it. The pro racing is a little bit different after say because first you can even two three weeks before you can sign up to any race you get this Ironman license for $1,250 and then you can race any Ironman race and any 70.3 race on the circuit that you want. I personally never believed to be honest in a plan B mentality I never did that in my life and that's something I learned probably from from the books and everything that is out there about Anna Schwarzenegger for example that is he has a lot of good things mindset wise that we can all adapt and learn from so I always have plan A plan A a is what you focus on if you're already looking for plan b i believe that distracts from plan a so if you're already looking for ways out you're already planning a little bit failure in the back of your mind and like ah, i can always do this so 2024 will be all about the ironman world championship ironman hawaii kona qualification that is obviously what all the pros want out there Hawaii is now only every two years instead of every single year. It is a pinnacle of the sport. I was lucky to be there twice as an age grouper. I love that place, everything from the spirituality about it to the physical challenges, everything about it just speaks to my heart and that's really what really binds me to the sport is this race. So 2024, we're gonna be racing early Ironman. I'm super excited for it. We are going to the USA and it's a trip that will involve two races actually. I will be a full month away from home. That's something else I haven't done before. And also the first race I'll probably be, be on my own. But I'm super lucky to have found two beautiful homestays from super nice people. So shout out for you two that are gonna take me up at the homestays. One in Oceanside, that is gonna be my first race. 70.3 Oceanside, early April. I believe in order to do really well in a full Ironman or any triathlon, you have to at least race once before. And since I'm here in, in Europe, by the time early April, there is no racing around here, especially no triathlons. So you kind of have to go overseas as well. Same for full distance races. There's nothing in the early time of the year in Europe, climate wise. So you have to fly overseas. So we'll be kicking off with Ironman Oceanside as a first one, 70.3, a nice hard get out. There I'm really looking for the swim and bike, especially really have an aggressive swim start. I believe that is something that's gonna be key at that race because there's gonna be, I would say, because the Ironman Pro Series 80 to maybe even 100 male pros, I wouldn't be surprised. So you can imagine when you all run into the sea uh, together to the first buoy, it will be extremely chaotic and hectic, just lack of space. Uh, I don't know how they will handle that, the Ironman Series, but I'm sure they found a way maybe to limit people showing up. So you have to kind of sign up on time, even for the pros. So the first eight to 10 minutes of the swim, I expect to be super hard, not just hard, but also physically hard. You have to prepare for a fight and for aggression and battle for, for your position. Otherwise, I think it doesn't matter what times you swim in the pool, you will just be a few minutes behind. So I look forward to that challenge, how I'll cope with that. And if my swim is at the level that I can be in the front pack, then on a the bike as well, really go with the surges, go with my instinct, follow my instinct. That's something that's one of the big rules and really race the race well and then have a strong run to finish off. So the whole race of, of Oceanside is basically just a preparation on the way towards Ironman Texas. I'll be doing two weeks of specific training for 70.3, but that's about it. Otherwise it's in my full Ironman prep because all eyes are, as I said, on Kona and especially Ironman Texas. So two, three days after Oceanside, I'll be flying from LA to Houston and then I will stay at a beautiful homestay. Super grateful to have the opportunity to train then in Texas because you can imagine flying in and out from the US between races and also climate wise here, April time, it's still gonna be very chilly in Finland to do all the outdoor riding that's necessary, especially if you have a hotter race like Texas. So I'm super grateful to have found a homestay there and be able to train two and a half, three weeks almost in the climate conditions in Houston, in the Texas area to prepare for Ironman Texas. Ironman Texas will be having six Kona slots for the male pros and female pros. So well, that is my plan A. Everything is geared towards doing the absolute best that I can physically in the race. And I believe if I do that, I'm gonna be in the mix. We can only control what you can control. I'll be happy if I just really race it well 
execute what I do in training in order to do well. I think it's a similar mentality. The swim will be again a lot of people starting. It is a freshwater swim. It will be non-wetsuit as well, very likely, which I think is good, suits me. Because a lot of people that are a bit weaker swimmers by nature, they will be automatically then a little bit further back. So I think it's a very pure way of the sport, same as Hawaii. If you can swim, you will do well. If you're not swimming well enough, you will be left behind. There's no kind of way of Kind of cheating away around with a wetsuit which is something i really like so again it will be very hard takeout i assume again the first 500 to even thousand meters is really have to be on the gas and not think ah, i have a full ironman i had a lot of hours left i think you really have to drill it there then what i also heard that because this is my first ironman basically pro debut i expect there are going to be a lot of surges also later on so you have to really be on your toes after like yeah, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 meters that there are not any gaps opening and you have to really practice the sighting beforehand as well so that you know what's going on in front of you and you can accelerate and close gaps again if there should be something opening. Then on a the bike, one thing I really hope for and I think it's going to be the case that they're going to use the race ranger which helps to prevent drafting it's basically a small sensor that is put on the bikes from the pros and it kind of gives the indication with GPS basically how the distance to the front guy is one thing I'm not quite sure, I saw it with the PTO races and on screen and that light was kind of red all the time on the screen so I don't know how they control it to be honest because in the show they're constantly in the drafting range and nothing happened so I don't really know how that works yet but I'm sure they have some specialists working on it and especially on a flatter course like Texas is super key that you know you really have a fair race and you have the distance hopefully they will also make it to 20 meters but at this point it's 12 meters between the front rider and the back rider. I have some really specific goal sets for my training that keep me busy every single day and also race specific training wise what I'm gonna change. I basically had a look as well at my training yeah, since I started triathlon and there were only two coaches that really managed well to get the race specific phase well in. Anybody that didn't have the race specific phase in as well as they did yeah, I actually didn't perform well in racing so it's really it's quite a difference between saying okay you're gonna you're training well and improving individually there's a difference between that and saying okay the last six to ten weeks before a race the work you do there is actually very very important it doesn't matter if your threshold is x y if you're not conditioned to the exact demands of the race you will not perform on race day to what you think is possible. So one simple saying, I think Cameron Worth said it at some point is, if you haven't done any training, you are just not gonna do it in racing. And that is something that holds entirely true. Also something for I had this year in the last, uh, last races where I felt like, yeah, okay, I haven't done it exactly in training. You can't expect your body to suddenly magically pull up and do those things. So I'm super excited for the 2024 season. All cards are gonna be on the first two races. After that, I will evaluate Again, the goal is to qualify for Kona. If that is the case, then of course my whole season changes, so I'm not gonna make any plans yet for anything after that. All eyes are on Ironman Texas, but basically every single day now, do the best decisions I can. Rest if I feel too tired, execute a program. Especially the race specific phase that you really like, stay patient, you're not like doing every single week, oh, I'm gonna go even harder, even harder. So on race day, you're gonna be cooked. So it's really like holding back training well but also always holding back a little bit that you really can unleash hell basically on race day and be really fresh and fired up to go. I hope you guys are also excited for your next triathlon season. I hope you have any nice goals set already, some specific goals for you for training, maybe something objective as well like hey I want a podium there, I want to have x y time, I want to have this ranking, Kona qualification maybe, whatever it is. Really set big high goals and dream big. If you enjoyed this kind of content please leave a like, a comment below. Thanks for following guys, i see you in next week's video.